some very important details to get to first. It is January 3rd. It is Tuesday. Just in case you're forgetting what day it is, it is that wild time of year. But January 3rd is the first trading day of the year. So it's kind of a first in a different sense. We're getting a business update from Chris McCusker joining us from City News 680. Good morning, Chris. How are you? How were your good holidays? Good morning. Uh, they were quiet, but that's okay. Uh, quiet's good sometimes. And uh, yeah, it's uh, sort of a wonky week as well. I'm glad you reminded me it was yeah. Tuesday because it feels like Monday. I feel so messed up with the days right now. I like know. I think it was like last weekend when someone told me it was Sunday all of a sudden and I it know. blew my mind. I know. I know. It's sort of a weird time of year. It's very easy to lose track of what day it is. So you're going to get us on track. Trading begins today. What exactly does that yes. mean? What is, is this a fresh start for the markets? Yeah, well, I mean, maybe, maybe. The same issues are still out there, Melissa. That's part of the problem. High inflation, rising interest rates, and uh, uh, China is scaling back its COVID zero policy, with some believing that perhaps maybe COVID cases have peaked. Uh, markets, though, in the U.S. coming off the worst year since 2008. The Nasdaq was the biggest loser last year. It was down 33 percent. Uh, Bay Street coming off a loss last year of 8.5 percent. We've also got these new restrictions in place for travelers coming from China. And China this morning vowing to hit back at countries which put those restrictions in place uh, for what it described as political goals. So a foreign ministry spokesperson says the entry restrictions lack scientific basis and some excessive measures are unacceptable. Canada, the U.S. and Japan, among others, are requiring travelers from China to show a negative COVID test before entering. Now, as far as markets go, we're also going to get jobs data on both sides of the border on Friday. And this has been described to me by some as sort of a lagging indicator that you start to see sort of a slowdown in the labor market as those interest rate hikes start to cycle through the system. And of course, we did see seven interest rate hikes in Canada last year. Lucky number seven. If you've been watching <laughs> Twitter, you know, during your holidays, you've probably seen a lot from Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. He's got an awful lot to say. And he's also the boss of Tesla, too. I'm wondering, he's getting back from holiday, maybe. What are things looking like for him? <laughs> well, Tesla is starting off the year on kind of a down note. We did learn uh, deliveries, fewer vehicles delivered than expected in the last quarter, despite offering big incentives in the electric car makers' biggest markets, that is China and the U.S. And this, of course, is renewing concerns around demand, which contributed to the worst month for the stock since its IPO in 2010. So shares in Tesla down 37 percent last month and down 65 percent last year. Now, on Elon Musk, he has seen historic wealth destruction. He's now worth $137 billion at the peak. He was worth $340 billion. So that means, according to Bloomberg, he is the first person ever to lose $200 billion in wealth. Wow, what a distinction. What a crown yes. he has to wear. Where did it all go? <laughs> yeah. It so, went to Twitter, frankly. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, okay, you have one more thing to talk to us about today. Tipping. Canadians, we don't yeah. know what we're doing. Yeah, and this is according to a new poll from Research Co. And it looked at a bunch of different scenarios. And basically, Canadians are now all over the place when it comes to tipping. A lot of confusion out there. Now, the performance of the server is one factor, according to this online survey, along with the busyness of the restaurant. So this survey shows about a third of respondents would leave a gratuity in the range of 15 to 19 percent if they receive exceptional service, no matter the busyness, I don't know if that's a word. Um, some would offer a tip of 20% or more if they receive exceptional service at a restaurant that is busy or exceptionally busy. Uh, and then just over three in 10 Canadians say they would not leave a gratuity at all if they receive below average service at a sit down restaurant when their server is clearly not busy. Uh, this survey also shows about two in five Canadians would leave a tip in the 10 to 14 percent range, while about 28 percent are in the 15 
to 19% range. Now, let's face it, servers, restaurant servers, have had a rough couple of years. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know about you, Tip Melissa, em. but yeah, I tend to go way over. Absolutely. Like way over, yeah. I mean, you're fortunate enough, you're at a restaurant, you're having a good time, you're having a good meal. You don't know what's going right. on in that server's life, what's going right. on with the chef in the back. Right, right. So, I mean, I, my thinking is I'd rather over tip than under tip, but with maybe you. that's just me. Thanks so much for that, Chris. So maybe okay. be a better tipper in 2023? Why not? That sounds <laughs> like a good resolution.